Well, it's time to dump the tanks this morning. Let me get that started. Um, while the tanks are dumping, I'll remove all the uh, stabilizers and egg chocks and all that stuff. I'll get the water all unhooked and get that put away after I get the, the tank flushed. And <clears throat> Man, look at that. So one of two things happened here. Either <clears throat> someone walking, because people walk through here all the time, either someone walking let their dog off leash and they came over here and took a nice steamy shit in our yard or they were on leash and their owner just walked over here and allowed them to come in our space and take the same said steaming pile of shit in our space all right now i'm gonna fill the fresh tank I'm going to put about 40 gallons in there and I know exactly how much I'm going to put because I got this water flow meter and um, if you don't have one of those they come in really handy. I'll leave a link down in the description. They're on Amazon. They're only a few bucks. It tells you exactly how much is going in because on your sensor you really only get you know one third, two third or full or if you're filling all the way up you can fill it up until the overflow overflows over there but if you want a specific amount like we want I'm going to put about 40 gallons in so I want to know exactly how much is going in there. So that's gonna help me out a lot. And you know, for two days or two nights, I mean, 40 gallons might be overkill, but you know, I'd rather have a little too much than, than not enough. But let us know, leave us a comment. Let us know what you do on travel day. If you're gonna be boondocking for set amount of time, how much water do you carry on board? And we know people who will carry a full tank everywhere they go. And some people just carry a little bit just in case. We generally don't carry any fresh water unless we're gonna be boondocking, but this is the first time we're ever boondocking. So we really don't know what to do. So. <laughs> We figured 20 gallons per day, which is probably, like I said, overkill, but we're new at this. We'll find out. Yeah, we're still working on it. We're about 13 something gallons there. But while that was filling up, I went ahead and took down the sewer hose and the sewer hose support. I picked up the freaking dog turd. There's some a-hole that his dog leave on our thing there. And uh, it's got everything else pretty much buttoned up. This is really cool because we we're going to plan to stay hitched up. For the next two days while we're traveling so we will not gas up today we'll we'll go all the way to the brewery and then tomorrow right after we leave the brewery we'll gas up and then all the way to the farm and then right after the farm we'll gas up and then we'll get into pensacola we're going from conroe texas to pensacola florida with two overnight stays at harvest host all right we're at 40 gallons so we're gonna kick that off and i'm gonna put this i'll leave this on city water right now because i gotta go and check and see if leslie's got to use the the facilities again before we go and then I'll put that on dry camping that way if we have to stop go to the bathroom or anything all we got to do is click on the water pump go to the bathroom wash our hands and then be back on our way but let's go inside and check and see if Leslie's ready to do a little boondocking all right ready to go scale of one to ten how ready are you to do a little boondocking I'm ready that's not an answer <laughs> I said scale of one to ten <laughs> I my comfort level is at a nine. Okay. That's How's good. That? That's good. I'll take that. I feel very confident, but I don't want to be overconfident. All right. I cool. feel like I'm prepared for these two days. All right. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Scout, scale of one to ten. How ready are you to do a little boondocking, buddy? Okay, so zero then? <laughs> ready or not, here we go. Uh, you can see there we're starting at 100% power and uh, getting ready to go disconnect the water and the power and I'm pretty confident that we can go these two days without having to use a generator or anything like that. I think we got enough battery power to run us for two days. Plus, sun came out today so we got a little bit of uh, sunlight to recharge us a little bit along the way today too. Well, we made it to the Crying Eagle Brewery in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This is our spot for the night big parking lot out here and the best part is that's a brewery <laughs> we had another issue before we left we couldn't get this slide in all the way this Schwintec slide and you can see it's out a little bit right there that's the best we could do we traveled with it like that uh, it's out a little bit on this side too it's a little bit wonky the freaking motors are out of sync we knew this was an issue a couple weeks ago. We had a tech come out and he told us that this slide right here, not only did the company not seal it properly and we had that leak, 
Well, they put the box in a little bit crooked, and I mean just a quarter of an inch or less, but that's all it takes. So now, since it's in wonky, it wants to wobble as it goes in. And so this one will go in a lot smoother than this side. This one gets hung up, and then this one stops going, and that one keeps going as far as it'll go, and then it'll stop. And I know you can do the bypass thing. I don't want to do that, though, because I'm afraid it'll break something. So we're going to have to uh, reach back out to Alliance and... Uh, Maybe get this thing into a bay. We were we were hoping that it would last until May, until we got there for the rally, and we could address everything all together. But I don't know. This thing it, it's getting worse and worse. So it looks like we're gonna have to get into a bay somewhere, probably in Florida, to get this thing refixed. But I don't know if they're ever the same once they come out. I don't know if they're ever the same when they go back in. So I don't know if this thing will ever get back to normal. It's super frustrating. But um, we're gonna take it out. I will take a look on this side right here. I'll see if I can see anything that might be binding it up or holding it up. But the tech, when he came out, he couldn't find anything or see anything. So, and he said, you might just have to keep syncing it back up, which we did. And it, it synced back up when it's all the way out, it's, it's synced and they'll go in together on both sides. And then when they get right in toward the end there, that one, this one, it'll stop and that one will keep going in. So I don't know, super frustrating. Well, good morning. End of the first night, 63% battery. So less than 30% used up. How'd you sleep? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Not we, too shabby. I didn't get cold. No, it was cold outside. It was down in the 40s last night. Yeah. So we cranked on some propane. We did. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. And I don't think we, I don't think we save any money by staying at Star on a harvest host. <laughs> well, that was a pricey brewery. Yeah. Their food was pricey. So after we ate and burned half a tank of propane. <laughs> I think we could have just stayed in an RV park overnight, <laughs> huh? <laughs> but it's fun. You see that, new places. That's right. <laughs> it's all about the experience, right? Exactly. <laughs> now you're getting it. <laughs> Snorted my happy pill this morning. <laughs> We're both gonna be happy. <laughs> you know, one of the coolest oh. things about boondocking is <laughs> Setup and teardown is super, super easy, but I'm not going to take anything for granted. I'm not going to assume that I got it covered just because there's not a lot to do. I'm still going to follow my checklist because if I don't, even though there's a couple things to do, I will, uh, I'll take it for granted and I'll think it's too easy and then I'll miss something and then I'll break something. So I'm still going to check off all my checklist no matter what, even though we're all hooked up. So that part, I just, I'll just go past it and still check through it. And make sure that um, I don't miss anything. All right, let's play a little game. I like to call, will the slide go all the way in? Fingers crossed. Come on. Come on, baby. You can do it. Looking good. Oh, get there. Keep going. Hey, winner, winner. <laughs> we did it. It's because I did it. Oh, it's because you pushed the button? The slide likes me better than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hypothesis. Okay. Oh. Are you going to stay in there during the travel day or are you coming to the truck with me? I think it would be fun to do one time. <laughs> I, I don't really think do it think would be fun to do one time. <laughs> It's illegal as hell, but <laughs> I would like to do it one time. <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay. Mm, Scouts is all bundled up, ready for travel days. Yep. Oh. Gotta stay warm out there. Oh, it's gonna be a blast of cold air when we get up. <laughs> Gotta keep them warm. Well, normally, it's not safe to vlog in the truck like this. <laughs> People would go, Shame on what, you. What are you doing? It's dangerous. But as you can see, by the scenery behind Leslie, we are not moving. We have not been moving for about, what, 20 minutes? 20, 25. Yeah, I-10. And we're on this bridge. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, okay. what's the bridge weight rated for? <laughs> because trucks are normally passing through here. But now you got hundreds, probably, mm 
because it's a long bridge. This is the big, big bridge across I-10 in Louisiana. Yeah. He probably got hundreds of 18-wheelers and mm-hmm. RVs and all kinds of stuff just sitting still on this bridge. And this bridge is probably, uh, I'd say, about 40 to 50 feet off the water. Yeah. So if it cracks off, we're in trouble. <laughs> yes, we are. Especially because I don't like water you Oh, but I got this. Through. I keep this in my door. Yeah. So I can bash my window and I could cut my seatbelt. I don't know what you're going to do. I'll get you out. I'll save you. It's the women and children first, right? <laughs> Me and Scout. Look, it's like the FAA, man. When the mask drops, you have to put your own oxygen on first. Okay? Because how am I going to save anybody else if I'm dead? Right? I don't make the rules. <laughs> it's not the rules. <laughs> you just made it a rule. <laughs> oh, and the bounces. The bounces on I-10 turned on the fireplace... Yeah. I looked we, when we got stopped. I looked at my app on the Victron app, <laughs> and I'm like, "What is drawing so much power? Our batteries are just w- oh, going yeah. away." And I'm like, "What's <laughs> going on?" And then because a couple of trips ago, the fireplace Did kicked you? on, and so Leslie's like, "I wonder if the fireplace kicked on." So I was like, "I don't know." So I got out. I ran up. I can't get to the fireplace to unplug it. With the slides in. With yeah. the slides in. So I just ran in the front door and clicked the breaker off. So now. We're not drawing that power, and we're getting some yeah. solar, so. Well, I'm doing something now that I never thought that I would do, and I probably don't recommend is, I'm standing in the middle of I-10, vlogging. <laughs> That's been an hour and a half now, and we still haven't moved. I don't know what's going on up there, but nothing's moving. There's several people out of their cars. The natives are getting restless, including Scout. He was getting a little twitchy. So now he's up here in the dash, enjoying the <laughs> sunshine of the day. Yep. And uh, so yeah, about an hour and a half it's been so far and we're still sitting, haven't moved an inch. Not one inch. Uh, we were going to a really cool Harvest Host, but yeah. I don't know that we're gonna be able to show it to you now because it might be dark by the time we get there. Well, we made it to our Harvest Host. We are at John Schneider's place, which is like his little farm here where he keeps a lot of memorabilia from the Dukes of Hazard, and I think he lives out here on the property. This is like a, this is the little campground. Now, the way that this Harvest Host works is, you can park here for free overnight as a Harvest Hoster without using any of the hookups, or you can choose to use the hookups. They do have hookups over here, um, but it'll charge you $40 a night. So we're just staying overnight. We have our solar and our lithium and we have water on board so there's no need to pay the extra 40 bucks but they do ask that you go to the gift shop and do a little shopping which i'm sure we will as long as it's still open it took us five hours to get here instead of the two and a half that it was supposed to take us to get here another good thing about this place is normally our bedroom is here so it's elevated because of the gen y hitch if we stay hooked up but because the rv is up on the pad and the truck is not it levels us out, so we're not going to be inclined. What did you just say before I turned the camera on? No, say it again. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I said I've never watched an episode, so I don't know where these cars come into play. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a boy show. <laughs> There's a girl in it. And that's the only reason the boys probably watched <laughs> it. Well, outside of crashing cars, because boys like to crash cars. But so we got checked in. They have a really cool little gift shop yeah. where I got a shirt. But this is what I really came for. But here is an old wrecked General Lee, probably one that they've jumped in the show. And I watched so many of these episodes that chances are. I watched this car crash during the shooting of a, of a show, for sure. But it's cool to see in person and get up close to and touch. And uh, these things are just bare bones. I mean, it's, it's really just an old car that they have framed out and nothing special because they know they're going to crash these things. But it's just really cool to see in person. This is my attempt at a, at a hood slide. Oh Lord! There's a thing. It says if you get hurt, it's not their fault. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Like that no, it didn't look like it at all. 
this was not shiny and slick like it was in the show. It's old and worn. Uh, That's why I was able to slide right. All right, we'll go with that. <laughs> and then right next to the General Lee is Uncle Jesse's truck. I don't know. If, it looks like they jumped this one too at some point. And they did jump us Uncle Jesse's truck several times in the show. So, and there's a there's a fender. There's a fender bow right here, so I'm guessing when they jumped it, this thing's, you know, front heavy, so when it comes down and hits, you know, and you can tell in some of these jumps, like after they jump it in the show, and that thing hits, you're like, oh, that car is not drivable anymore, it is toast, but then the next scene, they're going around the curve, and the car is fine. Looks like they do movies out here or something out in this field, they got this big screen. And they got a little cutouts. You can take your little selfies with the little cutouts out here. Well, I took my picture back there with Daisy. I was going to take my picture with Bo and Luke. But, uh, yeah, Bo had some issues with the birds. I think they used to maybe do like big events out here. They might host some things out here. And in the summertime, he said that the swimming pool was like the place the to be. Place to be. Yeah. So maybe they have stuff out here in the summertime where people come out and hang out at the pool. The pool yeah. was really nice looking. Yeah, if I'd it like was, to see it full yeah. blown. All right, now we're going to go have some tacos. tacos. We'll see you in Pensacola. Okay. Well, we made it to Pensacola. Travel day was good until we got here. The slide is stuck in. It won't come out. So the way our floor plan is, is uh, we can't access... The bedroom so we can't get to any of our clothes we can't get to our dresser we can't get to our wardrobe which we use as a pantry so we can't get to any of our food and um, I don't know what to say right now so I'm gonna have to just um, end the video hey stick around for a few seconds we're gonna honor a fallen hero if you want to get involved with helping us help veterans everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.